From all-you-can-eat buffets aboard a cruise ship to the back of a Precinct 5 patrol car, Lakeisha Woods-Williams is accused of abandoning her children. The 29-year-old mother was taken to jail tonight. The details of the allegations, almost hard to believe. So that don't even make sense right there. According to court records, neighbors at Williams Luxury High Rise apartment building, the McKinley, sounded the alarm. They said they saw the mother of two children leave with luggage and bags last Thursday, April 4th, and never return. On Tuesday, deputy constables with Precinct 5 responded to a welfare check at her apartment and found her eight year old son and six year old daughter home alone. The unit smelled of urine, record state, and was in disarray with trash and leftover food strewn about. And they told the deputies their mother had left to go on vacation on a cruise. These children were definitely left unattended for many days um, and, and put in serious harm's way. Williams is charged with abandoning her children with intent to return. Deputies did find a web camera and cell phone that the children said their mother used to check in on them. Is that sufficient? <laughs> Absolutely not. Prosecutor Keegan Childers says there is so much potential for danger. For them to provide for themselves, feed themselves, take care of themselves, as well as, you know, what if somebody breaks in? What if there's, you know, a bad neighbor? Any number of horror nightmare scenarios that could come up. Firefighters found the kids to be in good health. CPS released them to their aunt who declined to comment. But Otis Darjean, just a curious onlooker and father himself, had plenty to say. Like, that's a child, so that don't even make sense. Like, why would somebody leave their child, their young kids, behind like that. Jessica Willie, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Raw emotion today inside of a Cuyahoga County courtroom. The mother who pled guilty to aggravated murder after leaving her toddler home alone was handed her fate. News 5 anchor Tracy Carlos with the disturbing details. And we do want to warn you here that some of this may not be suitable for young children. For 10 days last June, Crystal Candelario admitted to leaving her 16-month-old daughter, Jaylene, home alone in a pack and play. She was a mother. She got a title that means something in this world. Animals take care of their infants better. Prosecutors say Candelario frolicked on the beaches of Puerto Rico with one man and visited another in Michigan while her daughter died a horrific death at home alone. Police say the 32-year-old mother left the baby with a bottle or two on June 6th. Neighbors' cameras captured her coming home 10 days later. Jaylene was dead. Dr. Elizabeth Mooney is the forensic pathologist who performed the autopsy. She told the judge the baby died from starvation, dehydration, and abandonment. She described the suffering the baby endured lasting days, possibly even a week. Feeling of abandonment for days on end, coupled with the pain of starvation and extreme thirst, is a type of suffering I don't think any of us could ever fully fathom. Prosecutors say when Candelaria got home, she changed the baby's clothes that were covered in urine and feces before calling for help. <laughs> <laughs> While video captured Candelario leaving and coming back, the cameras also captured the baby crying alone in the middle of the night. Cleveland police officers who investigated the baby's murder packed the courtroom, they say, to speak for the little girl. The case shook even the most seasoned first responders. Mothers usually want their children to have a long, happy life. But Candelario placed more importance on a vacation in Puerto Rico with her boyfriend than the health, safety, and well-being of her own daughter. Candelario's parents spoke through an interpreter in court begging the judge to show compassion for their daughter, who they say has struggled with depression, anxiety, and stress. My daughter did not have a good quality of life. The 32-year-old mother addressed the court. Can only hit it inside of me, yeah. And not a day goes by when I do not think of her. Le pido a Dios que algún día pueda volverla a ver. I pray to God that one day I will see her again. But Candelaria will not see freedom or her seven-year-old daughter anytime soon. Instead, I see photos of you on a beach. 
while your child was eating her own feces in an attempt to survive. The judge sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In Cleveland, Tracy Carlos, News 5. Tough story, tough day in the courtroom there, mm. but uh, we'll continue to follow through. Yeah. A Wilmington mother is accused of starving her four-year-old son to death. Mercedes Ferguson is charged with murder by abuse. The investigation began in August when police responded to a call of an unresponsive child. Despite CPR, the child did not survive. Court documents show the four-year-old weighed only 23 pounds at the time of his death. She is the woman accused of murdering the five-year-old boy that she was supposed to care for. Tonight, we're getting new insight into what was going on in Pammy May's head the day police say that she killed little Darnell Taylor and hit his body in a sewer drain. Well, body cam from the hospital shows officers trying to figure out where to find the child during an Amber Alert. We do want to caution you, though, that what you're about to hear is very disturbing. There's no chance your son is, is alive. This is the moment that Pammy May explains to officers from her hospital bed how she killed five-year-old Darnell Taylor. This video was released by Brooklyn Police. I had a son, I took my five, so yeah. May, who was Darnell's legal guardian, nonchalantly tells police that she was angry with him for eating snacks in his bed the night before. And he had the granola bars and the peanut butter crackers all in his bed. He had a knife, you know, to open up the box. The next night, she says she went into Darnell's room while he was taking a nap and suffocated him with a trash bag. By 10 minutes later, I knew he was dead because he was unmoving. With no emotion or remorse, May says multiple times in the video how she premeditated this murder. She even tells police that she did not have a good relationship with Darnell. I don't like his behavior, so I was more harsh and mean to him. May then tells detectives the exact location of the sewage drain where she dumped Darnell's body. If we showed you a map, would that help? He, he, he's on East Brooks and Marshawn in a manhole. Can Mars you look Dale? at the map? Oh, Marsdale. I'm sorry. Police found Darnell's body there hours later. We probably have a loving bond and a whistle night that will be me and my son. May later pled not guilty to murder charges. Her attorney asked for a mental health evaluation and the pursuing of an insanity plea. A judge has determined she was fit to stand trial during her previous court date, which was in March. And prosecutors filed a report last week that Pammy May needs to provide copies of the results from her physical and mental examinations. And you can count on our continuing coverage as this story develops. Anytime news breaks, you can find it first on the 19 News app.